Altair Daily On all streaming platforms Two, now. One. Western world only understand one language. Yes. <laughs> Everybody shouting for left, 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 left. Thank you. America. They don't care about Grammys or any of these things in the first place. All these international deals and all this international influence that is coming in is going to inevitably kill the Nigerian music industry. This is exactly what they did to South Africa. They literally started what you now need. You don't need the West to tell you this sound is good. And we have no continuity and no stability. The first two times I shot for Bonner, I hated Bonner's guts. Who is supposed to be my artist? So you can't really gauge how much of a genius he is mm. until he's in a place where he's vulnerable. Mm. You have to find a way to drive it on top of some sort of boat that could carry the car. I did Iron Man for Emma. It was on, it was very um, level type. Every time we shoot an artist that is going to grow, we know. Maybe I, I bow out at some point soon. So would you say that um, for our generation, we're trying to play it safe, trying to do both, not give a f also give a f fuck, and is there any positive in kind of giving a you know, because I remember like obviously like Whiskey didn't go to a couple of award shows, the BT ones, when they were going to announce the African winner on stage or whatever. Mm -hmm. Even JC2 has boycotted Grammys for a period and it can be 15 years, but they still end up there, you know, after the wait. So is, is there a positive side to... First, we are Africans. We are Nigerians. Our country is f but it's the only one that we have. In its f state, we still have something that the rest of the world don't have. If Afropeat hasn't been able to prove that to, to everyone else, then I don't know what the f as well. Mm. Guy, they are not here with, with all the respect. They're not here because of the OT sound. They're here because P Square at a point was collecting $250,000 issue and locked the damn freaking continent down and shook all until they disbanded and I still the highest paid Nigerian wow. African artists till date. Wow. So they came here because of all that, because of flavor and, and his highlight. That's why they came here. So you begin to see this is the thing. So in the past three years the fusion, and please remember that hip hop was a huge part. So there was the first war that we that we fought with, oh, rhymes and being able to rap in English, and the mother tongue war. Yeah. And to be honest, I was on the English side for the longest of time until I just I, it, it was a love hate. It was back and forth because you can't deny that there is more than there is racism. You can't. You can't deny the flow, and this is what we grew, what we grew up on. Yeah. But you also can't deny the authenticity. You know JB's productions, and how Rugged Man would sit down, down on the on the beats and just that mindset. You can't deny. Mm -hmm. So it was that, that 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 until the mass won the war, and then the M were able to take that and still be able to rap in English, but be able to put the. The sent it wasn't just the hooks, it was also the, the sentiment of what people you know, people mass wanted to hear yeah. Yeah. with the English. Yeah. And they still and then you found out that they were still the people now respected the flow. Yeah. They respected the English. But that's because you were speaking it to saying it to them in, in a way that they could they could yeah. relate to. You were talking yeah. about things that they could you know that was tangible to them, not yeah. all of the metaphorical but the but the but the but the but the but the are you talking, talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you seeing that? And there was that fusion. Now we're in a state where there's the pool. It doesn't seem like I see the fusion is going to 
come about. Now, and this now cuts across everything. So the fashion, the music, the videos, the mindset in itself. It's like, so we did all that work and there's this, well, we'll take 10% because that's what the mass want to see, but we really yeah. just, you know, it's what's happening in the UK, that just that entire vibe, because it'll be fresh, it'll be new. And yes, it's working because it's fresh and it's new. Till it stops being new and fresh. And you'd have wasted, missed an opportunity. It's the thing I say, I was saying to Tokyo James the other day when he was having a conversation here. Yeah. Like the fashion is forced now. It's like, you eat, just the same thing we do as Nigerians, we understand the scope. This white I want to be able to see some sort of regalness into the fashion. So this is how they want to be able to see it. So let's give it to them like that. So the Afro beats too, the same thing is, Fela is the sound. So you know what, let's add that Afro into it. That's what the, that international market wants to be able to see. I mean, yes, also here, it's also, also entering locally, for producers also entering, lo entering locally. But that's what they want to see and that's what we, we begin to put together. And we have flipped sounds god over 30 different flips in this in all this period so we have options of throwback things that we could go back to and we find with the new tech and just with the new understanding of just how what the world is listening to on our music but because it's a scam it's a scam is that thing that international market wants to see just engineer it around that right, you know just just push it <laughs> around that all right and with with the alt alt artists, it's a look. It doesn't have to be in the sound. It's just in us as as brands, right? We feed the, we feed archetypes that are that are different, but are still in quote Africa, but that still appeals to that the international market can understand. That's a way to go about it. But that well runs dry quick. It runs dry quick. We need to understand who we are, accept who we are. We are diverse people, but just by living in Lagos, there is a common language that we all know. You know that once it's, once it's extended, yeah. Don't go and tell me language. Mm -hmm. Nobody needs to tell you that twice. Don't if you're in this Lagos. Don't even leave the house. Huh? Leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> you know that. I just just be just using that, that as an example. There are things that and those things are the things that we should sell. That's what we have that is different. I came back from film school. I could have just moved from SA to, to the States. But a lecture of mine. Adam was told me, he said, look, you can't tell stories you don't know. Mm. And that made me think for a year, really hard. And it may be really hard in Nigeria and there's all this place has everything, but I'd always be telling someone else's story. This gold mine, I already had things that were already had is already a gold mine for. Yeah. for me All right, so if you if you look for instance if you look at the videos the Nigerian music video industry and the produce and producers have been being the most consistent part of this industry in, of this industry open about 20 years because the producers just keep getting better now we're adding writing to it yeah. meanwhile I started shouting about writers 10 years or 10 years God, I wish I wish I had just had it put it together right as then I have, ah my money I would have been collecting royalties now. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but then the, uh, the the videos, music videos itself has its own the journey for music videos is it's as parallel as the music <laughs> the industry itself. Right? There are a lot of factors with the music videos that have allowed the music industry become what it is today a lot of the growth with with music videos um 
there are a lot of wars that music video directors had to fight that people don't really think about. First off, just being able to just get your music to get played, uh, the videos to get played. And a, a lot of people did a lot of lobbying for that to, to happen. Apart from the labels, when the directors like to see them, they did a lot of, a lot of that. Just by also just doing a lot of coverage for a lot of these guys, and, you know, next to nothing, so that they just the videos get spit. Yeah. All right. And it wasn't necessarily that we were making a lot of money off the music videos there. I mean, this was. At the time, 50k some videos, sometimes 30k, just give 10k. That's just wow. so, I mean, I shot a 5k video before. Wow, yeah, I shot a 5k, 5k video before. <laughs> All right, um, so the, the, there was a lot of that down to we had to go to war with Ghana. Now, you know, music videos had to go to war with Ghana because you guys remember Music Africa period, it was Ghanaian music videos that ran. It was a conscious thing. So it wasn't like it just happened. That was conscious. Mm. And you see, you see, you won that battle. Then Jude had to go to SA to go and shoot to me. Then we now had to go to war with SA. Oh, but the SA zone was like, we yeah. thought it was over. We thought we were done. There was no way. How do you go to war against 35? People shooting on film with all that scenery, with all those. Mm. And I just like Ibo girls, Ibo girls are there and mm-hmm. everything looking fresh. How how do we win? I remember the very first time we saw Dumi mm. and Agatha Buri uh, Yeah. Depression came upon me. And I know boys that depression just came upon me was like, yeah, we need to find something else to do. <laughs> Literally, the the the, the air, that's just, that's the <laughs> because just from Economically, there's no way you were going to. That would always be what the artist wants to attain to. You would yeah. always get really scrappy budgets so that yeah. they can, for them to get successful enough, for them to buy tickets to go to SA to go and shoot the Godfather. That was the whole thing, what it was. Hmm. But my guy, Banjo, Banjo, was an editor, told me, he said, Guy, no. For every one, we'll drop 10. For every one of the SA videos, we'll give them 10. Yeah. And we'll sell this place to the death. So it was conscious. <laughs> it was conscious. It wasn't just all oh, just for yourself. Yeah. A lot of the boys were doing it. Yes, it was supposed to make money, but for you to make money, mm-hmm. you need to move it forward. Right, you are rinsing it. <laughs> right. Then we had to now go to war with UK. When Mo now came, Chesson, from Chesson and Mo, that yeah. period was like, all right. We thought we'd gotten to our DSLR, our 70s, 5Ds. We're balancing. And this one is going to see and this the red. red. All right, so boys, now I'm starting how to use red mm. one. And red one, if you shot red one, is is not wasn't built for the African market because it gets hot, it shuts down. All right. So uh, you transfer, and if it shuts down, you can lose your entire footage. I know that twice I had to send hard drives to Yankee for them to only recover. What? Footage. <laughs> hmm. This is us coming from. You are shooting. There was a time that we couldn't show feet because we there's a place, famous place in Java called Veritas. Veritas is where we, we used to shoot. But Veritas is small. The headroom is really yeah. also small, so you can't really do wide shots. Yeah. Plus, you don't have you have a bullet that you can try to squeeze to build a background. Yeah. Then you don't have to think about the floor. Yeah. So I remember I used to get this for not showing the floor. I used to get this. I used to, I was called the Prince of Darkness for 10 years. And my thing was everyone shot flat. I was and I'm a shadows guy. Yeah. I was going to shoot the shadows. The problem is HDVs, P150s, all these other cameras don't have light shoot, light shoot the cameras so really, uh, don't, there's no dynamic range to, to them. Yeah. Right, so that pro- made my box really all too crunchy. Yeah, but I was like, "That's it, and that's it, what it, it is." It became your thing because, um, you know, like when, when you see Clarence video now today, you just—I mean, you go to for so long. 
And I think about it from what's that big one that we like that here? Back one. No, no. I mean, I smell like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like, yeah. and videos like that, I look at that and I feel like, okay, yeah. what it would have been like. Mm. I mean, that's why I look at from the outside, but there was always this standard that you just always meet. Oh, now Jackson was a completely different example. Let me give you a story about that. We needed to find a way to transport a Benz on top of water. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, wow. and also Benz. That one like, wasn't. It was yes, bad. that ended up getting f by the time he got on set, but we still shot it like that anyway. Hmm. He had to find a way to drive it on top of some sort of boat that could carry the car. Wow. And he got to a location. Only for us to get to that location, I found out that they was they were um uh um, shrines. There's no they are right there and then when I started looking for a location. Yeah. So we found a location as a result of mobile resort mm -hmm. that nobody's supposed to shoot him so we needed to tip the security guards and the guys that the chinese guys that were the custodians of the place they'd find money to give those chinese guys they then move the bands yeah now this is the only time that david and his gangs coming late walked in the mountain because yeah. they were six hours late yeah. that's what gave us enough time to be able to move the bands about 30 minutes the other way yeah. Get the bench down. When we're done, I had to leave the bench there. Wow. <laughs> we was one of those crowds that was just there now. I don't know. I think my producer at the time, Nico, has found a way to get the bench out. I don't know what that nigga did with the bench. Mm. So, so <laughs> by the time we were done, Jackson was meant to look simple, mm. but the logistics around it wasn't. So I only ended up shooting about 50%. Most of the videos, I only ended up shooting about 50%. And um, uh, that made the road, we only shot about 60, even though we had two two days, because we were supposed to shoot at a helipad, yeah. and the chopper was supposed to be there with the blades spinning. But you can't fly choppers in Nigeria at night mm. because the beacons don't exist. We found about that, we found out about that when we got on set. That's one of the differences difference now. Mm. Every time we shoot an artist that is going to blow, we know. The whole crew knows. You, it's always one shot that you put and everybody watch. And once mm. I say cut, it's just silence. Wow. Everybody's just, the crew just starts singing down like this one, this one. Mm -hmm. No, wow. it's just the feeling that you have. Yeah. Um, um, for Wiz, it wasn't one video. Wiz, we knew because Wiz used to be here. Okay. Wiz was supposed to be my artist for well, well, because in that entire period, all right. More cheddar, it was when we were doing finance, we just had a low angle shot, the, the last shot that we did, and it was just a performance. And when I said cut, me and Kim Thurs, I said, This girl don't move. We knew it. Uh, David was under the bridge. Right, it's, it's one of the things that I I, I oh, really love sure. about David is when David's heart is in something, people don't give the kid uh, that much credit. David is very very weird artist. You can't attain, you can't really gauge how much of a genius he is mm. until he's in a place where he's vulnerable. Also, mm. Until he's in a place where he's told himself, mm -hmm. I'm going to get this thing. Yeah. Where he feels he's in a vulnerable state. All right. That's when his genius comes alive. And it's amazing to watch. Two times, probably with three, three actually. First is Damage Road under the bridge. He, he was tired. He's been shooting for two days. I just woke him up and told him, I said, Yeah, this shot is the shot. Just have fun. Da, 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 da. Sorry, slowly. The next thing I just started seeing him jumping around doing the drum boy kicking his leg his legs. I was like uh, I was like, oh sh mm. oh sh he did done it with that. That that was so cool. And his father called me and told me that the first edit that we did that we did that towards the end we yeah. started adding some shots. No, 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 we should move all those shots. Just when he's dancing, we should just leave that place. And I said, okay, sir. And I was kind of upset. And I caught it together. I was like, the old man is right. <laughs> right. The second time with him was in Ae. It was my very first shot with him in the 
where he was where he took the cup off and did that. I was doing. I was like, ah, there it is, there it is, there it is. There. And the third time was in fire. So there's a gate. It was also around the bush environment. That's just weird. And I was shooting that, and it's just the emotion and passion he adds. He brings once you see that visually. Yeah. That's when you start to hear the song for the first time. Mm. Wow. wow, wow. Bona is also weird. The first two times I shot for Bona, I hated Bona's guts. Because Bona will come on set late. But he. People usually say it's arrogance, but he's not very. When he doesn't know you, if Bona doesn't know you, he, he just keeps himself very reserved. So you can misconstrue that yeah. for him being arrogant. But the yeah. very moment he starts to get. You guys, start, he starts to get comfortable with you. He's he's amazing. So I put him in the cage in Romaris. Mm. I just told him like this is like my old to hype. This would be like if hype was here. Every people are shot in shrine, but no one's done this shot yeah. like this. So this is my belly moment. That's mm. why I call it like that. This is pretty much how. That's all I had to tell. The f- that was all I had to, had to tell him, but that was it. You just took it there and pop. That was, and that's when I could see it. Also, Yarabi, same, same thing. He had come six hours late. I was upset, but there was a low angle shot I was going to do against the sky, which is the popular shot with, with him when the shirtless with all the air boys around him. Mm-hmm. And I did that take, and I was doing that. I felt like, I don't care if this world comes six hours late, this video is blown. <laughs> <laughs> right? Recently, it happened, and it hadn't. It didn't happen to me throughout last year. Look, you can have the biggest budgets in the world, have the biggest sets, have the best gear, have the best post. All these things are here to complement you, the artist. If I don't get performance from you, uh, it doesn't inspire me to do much. So the whole of last year, it it, it almost felt like all the. In court, all the access were like embarrassing or good. Yeah. There was the conversations of conversation, so he wouldn't really understand what Arja, what we stand for. There was conversation of how he imposes his ideas. And I, I, I heard all, all, all that. So I shot for Rema. When I did Iron Man for Rema, it was on, it was very um it was a very legal type video. So when yeah. I saw do maybe I kind of know that, that Rema had a lot of in the input himself to mm-hmm. the and I and I got that. Mm-hmm. So the very first real chance I got to do me with the new artist was a lady coming here on this chair and saying this fireboy. Oh, I just said, just do you. I was like, hmm. are you sure? And he was like, yeah. I, I don't. He's being seen as just this very lovey dovey. Yeah. I don't want him to be lovey dovey. I want him to be. Some roughness around yeah, him. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, but I'm gonna need the budget in two days. So I was like, okay. Yeah. I'm like, so I still didn't believe him. So mm-hmm. in my accent, <laughs> and I was like, okay, first your first bullet is high, but we can bring it down a little. And then I brought it down a little. I was like, okay. I was like, okay, I still don't believe. And the cops called me and like, yeah, we have the budget. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> right. But at the time, I'd also been listening to the music, and I really like music. Yeah. But he didn't really do it until we got on set. So when we did the first, the first scene, scene we shot was the under the bridge scene, in National Theatre. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it was it was alright. Like yeah, we kind of expected that. Then I we're going to do the Joker scene. So I called him. I said, look, I need all because the thing what people don't understand is it's not this Joker. That wasn't the design. It wasn't even Heath Ledger's. Joker is the Joker is the Joker from the comic books, the one with the purple jacket. Yeah, That's the Joker yeah. I took. But I literally took, tried to take the personality from Stanley Kubrick's Clockwork Orange. Was what I was trying. But the only way I could explain to him was that I wanted to heighten Heath Ledger's Joker and just try to do that. And wow. immediately I said that, I took the first take, I was like, oh sh. So this kid just needed the proper direction. Mm-hmm. Alright, man, that's, that's cool. Oh. Ah, yes. 
from that point I was smiling yeah, yeah. to the end because it just made it a lot easier for me to just get and so things like we had pre-planned the corridor scene but because of the way his character was I was like look I don't want any lights I just want him to use the touch light constantly hold it to light his face because I knew he pulled off with his with his face yeah. so you now start knowing seeing that and you know the different things that you could do with the artist so the problem now is a lot of directors are getting to shoot the things that they've always wanted to shoot and not thinking about the artist about mm. selling they are supposed to be selling and I can also blame the, the directors because well if the artist is just giving you money and just believing that they can just show up yeah all right even with the alternative of, 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 of artists and saying those so this, we have an idea of trying to this they have this archetype of the kind of artist which is very archetypes from foreign artists that they want to be like mm-hmm. and they want to stick to that mm. and i'm like well that's not really how this should go yeah. you want to shoot a video that was successful right so let's sit down and understand okay so your brand what's your brand again all right that's what you that's what you want people to perceive does that is that in line with the music because a lot of times it's not how you want people to see you or what you feel about yourself is not in line with the music that you make so that's a really contradiction and sometimes that contradiction can work if you're an artistic person if you can pull it off with your performance and we can say the song is going to be and just that it's speaking in my direction i love uh, r&b which i'm not sure you are a tomboy or a girl and just find it so we're trying to look for how that would be married for instance i had an artist once that i had that problem with and she left because she thought that i wasn't taking her seriously her name was fefe fefe had amazing R&B music. It's very, very 90s music. I love the music. She was very tomboyish. If I tried to make her, I did a test shoot. I tried to make her sexy. It wasn't working. So my thing was, I was trying to figure out the best way to go about reconciling her sound and how she would look. And because we run a lot of artist development here, so apart from size the videos, I do a lot of A and R. People don't know that, and I do a lot of art. <laughs> All right. Uh, so because we do that, I had on the bench for like a year. I'm here, and she's like, I'm here with the videos, and I'm like, I don't want to have one videos. Miss Kiss already has 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 videos, and I'm like, yeah, because Miss Kiss's brand is already like, music and her brand is already put together, so it's we it's good to go with her. With you, we still need to do a bit more work, but when we get it, it'll be perfect. Yeah. She didn't. She didn't get it. So till today, I'm like the devil <laughs> because of because of that. Right? Then you find the artists that you get to work with that have um, music and their brand is in this work together. But where they are in their minds, just in terms of their influences at the time, is a complete mismatch. So we're supposed to sit down and figure that out first. Then when we figure that out, and I've seen the amount of work that you also put in, like the best artist anyone can ever shoot, Nigerian artists still date the visual in front of the camera is visual. Because this is the primary objective of the school. Put us outside, put a form, we'll perform. One take, and it blew. That's the idea. Mm-hmm. So Jude can put a 12 millimeter lens in front of the camera. Low angle, track. These boys can do one take in Dumi. One. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like they rehearsed it. It's almost like Paul can hear Peter's mind. So mm-hmm. as he's pumping out of the frame, bah, you know how you're editing and you, you usually when someone leaves the, the shot and the other person comes in, that's where you want your cut point is supposed to be. Yeah. With Peter is in reverse. You want that because the movement from one person to another person is awesome. <laughs> so the, it's so freaking smooth. So one take on the timeline. Are you like, we can release this video. That's how much work they, they already put in. 
There's no director you want to give that to. That loves what they do. Yeah. That you'd have done that. And right there and then, the setups that they didn't plan for, that start coming up because I should do this here. I could do this here. I could do that there. No, because, because you're being inspired. I'm not. If I'm inspired by the music alone, and by my ideas of things I've always wanted to do, then I'm doing you a disservice. I should be inspired by you. I always say one thing, if I have to shoot a bad video for you to sell more records and get more shows, and that's what you want, yeah. that's the objective, then I'll shoot a bad video. Because that's the job, that's the gig. The gig isn't to shoot a video. The gig is to give you visual material, motion picture, visual material that allows you, allows girls to want to move their panties if you're a guy. Yeah. And if you're a girl, well, everybody wants to move their panties. Yeah. Yeah. That's the job description. It's not necessarily for, it's not an ego trip. It's not for me. To, I'm not necessarily trying to you. My primary job description is not to use you to actualize all my fantasies and my dreams. Mm. If I want to do that, then I'll go and shoot my video. I'll go and record my song and shoot my video yeah, myself. Okay. So that's not the job description. So it's it's easy for directors to do that. When you're not trying to sell, when you're being paid, to make videos but if you're being paid i always like to tell myself i'm being paid to visually help uh, help blow an artist and i put a lot of bad pressure on my shoulders and i'm starting to think that market doesn't give so before i completely kill myself or sell out maybe i i bow out at some point so because this there's, there's nothing it's nothing anymore oh. really. you think about it i we'll have a lot of old creative videos here and a lot of kids yeah. are doing really really good work there is no focus to it mm. and i don't blame them for it it's intent. You know when I told you that with age perspective, yeah, right. I'm able to have that perspective from when I was young because of the way I was brought up, the environment I was brought up in, right. But perspective, and an artist can be successful because you shot a video from them, but do you understand that that's what you? how do you understand how that's done yeah. it's it's not a mistake that the oscar winning actors about 60 to 70 if not more percent of them have the movies the directors may not win best director yeah. but it's been specific directors that have being the ones who have been able to actors that you thought were average but appeared in front of their, their lens and suddenly became yeah. it's 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 direction is uh, it's on purpose a lot of things that we're doing now isn't isn't on purpose we're not trying to, essentially we're not trying to build an industry anymore because we believe that international communities here they're the most pain they're the ones that are going to be paying us. So first of all, starting with the, with the corporates. So there's not a lot right now. So in other words, you have iTunes and all these coming from there. Mm. They're the ones paying, all right? Uh, the whole of last year, any Nigerian artist that didn't do at least 40% of their gigs yeah. outside Nigeria, didn't, make any, didn't really make any money. So the gigs are also not in, not in Nigeria. So what's Nigeria's use? Alter Daily, the alternative network.